last semester, uh, and they also have the challenge of uh, looking ahead towards the fall semester and uh, seeing what they're going to do today, uh, you know, do going forward. So I think uh, I see uh, Alfred Williams uh, uh, on my on my screen, and Alfred is the uh, is the president of River Valley Community College, and uh, didn't have to. Uh, drive to Keene to join us this morning. He could uh, join us virtually, for, I assume, from Claremont or somewhere thereabouts. Uh, and so I'd, I'd like to start with Alfred, and then we'll go to uh, Kamal Atkins. Um, Melinda Treadwell was not able to join us uh, this morning. My understanding is that the governor uh, asked that she uh, be at a meeting at 9 a.m. Uh, to uh, talk about University System of New Hampshire issues and uh, she was charged uh, with heading up that effort, uh, the COVID-related effort around the university system. So I guess that when the governor calls and says, "I need you to be a, at a meeting at nine o'clock," then then you then you do that, even though we think the chamber would be a better place for her to be. Uh, but anyway, Alfred, uh, let's uh, let's let's start off and and uh, and and give us a sense of of how things have been going at River Valley. Uh, this spring and uh, uh, both good and, and challenging? Well, I would say that, uh, well, thank you to everyone for uh, inviting me and letting me share what's uh, going on at River Valley and say that things have been going a lot better than we had uh, hoped and expected that they could be. Um, back in March, when the COVID crisis began, we, in a very just before spring break, about three or four days before spring break, uh, began the process of moving all of our classes online. Uh, we were in a good position in the sense that because of having the three campuses, a lot of our faculty were already used to using technology to do online teaching. And those faculty uh, took the other faculty under their, under their wing and, and, and worked with them over spring break and got everyone set up uh, for, cla for classes to be online after spring break. The, uh, the, some, some faculty found that it easier to keep their regular class time and teach uh, like through Zoom as we're, as we're meeting right now. Um, other faculty converted to an to a online format where students could do work and were assigned work and could do it as, as they needed. Uh, we, one of the things that we were very worried about was uh, losing students. Uh, we needed to make sure that we were connected to students and met their, their needs. And so we set up a group of what we called remote liaisons, where we assigned every staff member at the college, uh, one of our students. The caseloads range from 20 to 50. And every week, those staff members would call students and have conversations with them and give them uh, information. And we learned a lot from our students by talking to them that way and what they needed. What's interesting is, uh, is that I noted that there was uh, one of the questions came up to D about broadband and, and internet access. We anticipated that that was going to be a big problem. And we purchased uh, some Chromebooks for students. We purchased some hotspots at the library, you know, that we were gonna let students check out at the library. And what we actually learned was the bigger issue for students was food. Uh, as we talk to students, um, you know, we have, a, we have a, a, a pretty robust food bank at the college and a lot of students use it. And so we ended up getting a donation from our foundation and we purchased uh, gift cards for grocery stores for, st for students. And we passed out, out about $8,000 of gift cards and remote liaisons identified those students with uh, food needs. We also had our food bank running so that we would, we would fill up bags and students would do a drive by and pick up food. So between the combination of delivering, getting food to students and getting gift cards to students, we tried to continue to work on, on their food needs. When we looked at the data, actually from spring break until the end of the semester, we had less uh, drops. We had a higher retention rate than we did in the year before. So we think that the direct contact with students on a regular basis really made a big difference for them getting through the semester. We managed to get it so that everyone that, uh, that was set to graduate in the spring was able to graduate. We had a couple of slight delays in some lab classes, but we were able to finish those before uh, graduation occurred in, in, the middle of the, in the middle of May. And one of the last things we did with remote liaisons was have a conversation with students about now that a lot of our students lost jobs, they're home. Uh, so we utilized the CARES money and some other money to say, uh, we, you know, we want you to graduate. We want you to move forward. We don't want COVID to hold you up. We want you to do this as quick as possible. This semester, summer might be an opportunity for you to 
to continue and, and move faster so that you can graduate quicker. And, we, and our enrollment is actually up 30% for the summer. All of our classes are online this summer, but compared to last summer, we have 30% more students and we have, uh, we have labs coming at the end of the semester uh, that students will be doing in July. And currently we have students, small groups of students on our campus that are coming in to finish up labs from the spring, working directly with instructors, uh, a lot of times in very small groups. We have re relabeled all of our classrooms so that there's six feet of uh, social distancing among everyone and we have ample PPE, including face shields and gowns for, for students in those programs to use as they finish up, uh, finish up their semester. So that's that's an overview of, uh, of some of the things, Phil, that you had pointed out that you wanted to hear about um, uh, that had happened at River Valley uh, during this crisis. That's sure great. That I'm, I'm particularly uh, interested in the enrollment uh, being up. That's, uh, uh, that's fascinating for the summer. Uh, how, many, how many students take advantage of your uh, summer uh, offerings? So we, we currently are, are close to 400 students enrolled this summer, whereas last summer we were in the low 300s. That's terrific. terrific. So that's, yeah. that's about half of our regular fall and spring uh, population. Excellent. And uh, let, me, let me ask a question. I, uh, I uh, know I saw, I think I saw uh, Mayor Hansel from, uh, from Keene on the call, and we were talking about this in an earlier Zoom. Uh, call. Uh, I, I know we're all kind of zoomed out. I, I seem to have a bunch of them every day. Um, with remote learning comes potentially challenges related to broadband connectivity. Uh, has, has that been an issue uh, that you've heard anything about? Uh, surprisingly, we, we, th we thought this was going to be our biggest issue and surprisingly we have not gotten uh, enough complaints that to make it one of our issues. What we've done for students that we've had issues, and these are very small numbers, we're talking less than 10, is that we have rented them out uh, from our library uh, uh, hotspots so that they can use their phone to, uh, to, 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 to push it towards a computer. And we also have purchased, uh, we purchased about 40 Chromebooks for students to check out. And so we've only checked out about 15 of those Chromebooks for students who didn't have uh, computers at home. Uh, we, we had some requests for webcams, but uh, found that the Chromebook, uh, what the price range in the Chromebook with a webcam built in was a better purchase than buying a whole bunch of individual webcams. But that's, those are the types of things and requests we've, we've received from students. When, when you think about what you've learned this spring and, you know, some of your courses obviously lend themselves better to remote learning than others. You mentioned some of your lab requirements for courses and and uh, the need for PPE and some of the other things that you, that you uh, were able to get to help with those. Uh, how does that project looking forward to the fall semester? What are your uh, plans for the fall semester? And understanding that these things, uh, you know, can change from uh, from week to week, but as as we sit here today, what are your plans for the fall semester? Yeah, yeah, Phil. Before I before I mention fall, I just want to go back to the the broadband issue again because the reality of it is is that what I'm telling you is what we're hearing from students. But when we dig a little deeper, I don't think that I could do what they're doing because I think that a lot of our students are doing a lot of work on their phones, and I don't know how you know I, I with my eyes and such, I don't know how they're they're doing that that's what they're used to that's what they do so i think that they're even though you know we're not getting the the, the you know the really we, i need this i can't get work done i don't think that that's a good long-term solution for students to be working on their phone and we're still you know trying to get to the get to the bottom of that and what we can do um for the fall semester we uh what we have done is we have moved a lot of our liberal arts classes online uh for the fall because for example, our math instructor, Rich Andrusiak, has been teaching his classes where they meet regularly at the regular time that they would meet. So if they meet 2.30 to 5.30, he's holding a Zoom session. And, he's, and those have been working really well for him. And he goes into individual rooms and works with individual students. And so we had a, uh, we had a meeting with all of the faculty and the liberal arts faculty, you know, we, because we have a lot of allied health programs, we need to have classroom space to be able to teach those labs and get those students through those programs. And so we made a decision that if we move a lot of our classes, our, our classes that don't need to meet actually in person online, we can use multiple classrooms uh, for our allied health program. So what we're going to look like in the fall 
is uh, is we're going to we're going to look very spread out. Uh, we're going to see a lot of a lot more intermixing. We've done this. We did. We've done this before, where we have students that are taking class in Keene, Lebanon, and Claremont at the same time. But there's going to be a lot more intermixing of that on the liberal arts and the business programs, where uh, where where they're going to be online and they're going to they're going to be zooming and they're going to be doing it from what's best for them. We'll have, of course, our space available. We'll have the Cheshire House space available for the students that need broadband that they can come in and they can do the class from there. Um, but then we're also going to see that with our nursing classes, with our LPN classes, with our other allied health programs, we're gonna see uh, traffic. We're, we're front loading those labs. Uh, faculty are anything that has to be done in person, uh, they're, they're doing towards the beginning of the semester. We're anticipating that there will be a return to uh, to remote work and distance and distance full distance learning uh, by the middle of the semester, or at least by Thanksgiving, where everything is designed to be back remote by Thanksgiving at the latest. And so, faculty are designing their classes and and structuring them in a different way uh, to meet that. So we're we're beginning to see that a little bit on our Claremont campus, where we're, we roughly we're, we're back open. To, to staff, we staff are working about two or three days on campus and two or three days a week on home at home. But we have about ten or fifteen students a day coming in to finish up different clinicals, really for different programs. A lot of the uh, clinical uh, national organizations have changed their standards a bit. So, for example, our respiratory program, rather than going to a hospital, they're coming in and they're working one-on-one uh, -on -one with our faculty to finish their respiratory clinical hours. Uh, we recognize that a lot of our graduates are going into the jobs that are that we need for this COVID crisis and so we have to figure out ways to keep them going through their curriculum. This was why it was really important. We're really excited about that a lot of them took you know liberal arts classes and other classes over the summer because the faster that we can get them to uh, to graduate and get out into the healthcare workforce the better for the community. That's a great segue to my final question for you. Uh, uh, and that has to do with uh, kind of the connection to the workforce and uh, what you've seen in terms of uh, hiring uh, from area employers uh, from your perspective. I mean, you're, you're, you're part of the pipeline uh, uh, sending, sending people into the workforce. Have you seen uh, uh, a dip in any requests for your graduates or interest in your graduates, or is it risen, or is it risen recently? Uh, it's a higher un unemployment rate, obviously, right now we hear in the aggregate that's a higher unemployment rate, but I, I'm curious as to how that might be playing out with River Valley specifically. What we're seeing is we're seeing delays in hiring. Um, we're not seeing that people are being told they're not going to be hired. We're seeing that they're, you know normally a lot of our graduates would already be hired or been hired a month before they graduated. And what we're seeing is because a lot of businesses were not uh, didn't have HR uh, available to do interviews, didn't do things that, that that they're saying we're going to be hiring you. It's just it's taking time. There's a process. So we're starting to hear that students are also be accepting jobs that they're not starting for another month or two. Uh, that as businesses come back online, they're bringing they're bringing their already existing staff back first, and then they're starting to bring in their their new staff uh, uh, later. So you know we we pulled all of our allied health programs specifically on this and and you know some of them vary differently like our nursing students have for the most part still have the same you know full employment that they've had for you know in, in the last couple of classes but we're seeing like our pt program where there's a lot of uh touching and hands-on uh that that people are delaying and saying we're going to hire you in uh in the fall we're going to bring you back in august you know they, they furloughed some of their existing staff so they're bringing their furloughed staff back and then they'll bring bring our new graduates online um, I will say that the th there's a there is a recognition in the uh, that the need for our graduates from a lot of the hospitals like our, our LPN program, um, which started uh, we had our first class that started in January in Claremont. The next cohort is starting in Keene in January, and uh, we have to you know we have to have them do clinicals and Dartmouth Hitchcock uh, you know set up to be able to handle them all our entire class for clinicals. Uh, they've got them set up in the non-COVID area of the, of the hospital and they're working with them and they felt, you know, they need those graduates. So they felt it was important to make sure that they, they figured out a way to work with them. So we're finding that uh, a lot of our larger uh, healthcare employers in the area, 
they they want to make sure that our graduates meet the, uh, the the standards they have to meet too. So they're figuring out ways to work with our faculty to make that happen. That's terrific, and and uh, as is the the fact that your nursing program is 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 on its way back with in in a robust way uh, in, in over the past year or so, and and working with Keene State and other partners, uh, uh, that's really good news for the region. Uh, while while we're on the sub subject of River Valley, and I want to I'll turn to Keene State in just a second. Uh, I see that Martha Mott is uh, is on with us this morning, and she has. Uh, uh, one of my favorite programs in the in the in the region, Work Ready, uh, and I just wanted to see if she would spend a minute or two saying how that's been going uh, when shifting to a virtual uh, format. Well, thank you very much, Phil, and thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, Work Ready New Hampshire started in 2011, and when it did, all these years we said we will never put this online. We teach soft skills, 60 hours of soft skills, so communication, problem solving team building, conflict resolution. And we were sure that the best way to do that was face to face. Um, however, when this COVID hit in March, we did a quick pivot and we decided to put it online using Zoom. Uh, Zoom, isn't, Zoom has been around for us, I think two or three years at the college, but we haven't used it all that much. And it's been a great tool um, to use for this soft skills class because we can see each other like we're seeing each other here So we can still do communication um, conflict resolution during our, our um, Training as well as during the project that they the team works on together um, So we've done this around the state uh, We I'm on, we're on our third cohort. We'll start on Monday for River Valley Community College We still have room available um, one thing, we test for reading, math, and critical thinking skills through ACT. We've not been able to do that because ACT requires face-to-face. -face. However, at River Valley, we're, we've scheduled one for July 9th. Like Alfred said, the rooms are set up so only a few people can come. So we'll follow those rules carefully and we'll be the first um, uh, college to test actually with ACT since March when everything was closed. Um, our numbers at the beginning were okay because we were still out in the community at that time. We had people signed up for future classes. So when we rolled out this online class, um, we were ready to go with participants. Since then, around the state, we've struggled getting people in, which surprised us. We thought with all the high unemployment, like when we started in 2011, we had large classes because of the unemployment. Um, we expected to get a lot of people and fill our classes and that's not happened. So what we've realized is that people are still home, they're caring for kids, they're trying to work from home. Those who are unemployed are getting a pretty good amount of money we're hearing and may not be ready. They're on hold as well. Businesses are saying, um, like Alfred was saying earlier too, with hiring, you know, you can come back. We're not sure when you can come back, you know, hang on there. So I think people don't wanna to commit to a three week program because it's an intensive program, Monday, you know, Monday through Thursday, nine to 2.30 at River Valley for three weeks. You really um, it, uh, put in, that people put in a lot of time to learn these skills and get this training so that they can earn the two certificates on the end. So I think people are just in a wait and see. They don't know which way to go. Uh, the folks who've decided to come into the class are still raving about it. We, you know, we've always had really 99% of our graduates and we've had over 400, 540 at River Valley and 3,700 in the state say this class met or exceeded their expectations, 99% of them do. So it's an outstanding class. Thanks, Phil. You are one of our best refers, um, and we appreciate that. Um, but we're still open. We're still running, oh, open enrollment. We have classes running. If we're not running it, because we're uh, statewide, if I'm not starting on a certain date, another college is, and we can send people to that college because we're working remotely. So we had someone from Portsmouth in our class. Um, and we're over here on this side of the state. So that works really well. And Phil, I wanna say one quick thing to comment about Keene State College. My son graduated this year and they did an outstanding job getting him, he graduated in architecture. So in March, they didn't go back for the spring, but they put everything online really quick too. So I wanna give a shout out to Keene State and how wonderful it was for him um, at, at, in his program and how they dealt with this as well. Great, well, thank, thank you, Martha. And if anybody, uh on this is is not familiar with work ready or would like more information i encourage you to uh contact martha or contact the chamber and we'll put you in touch with her uh yeah. it's, a, it's a it's a terrific program and and she gave us the perfect segue to to move to kamal uh uh from keen state college uh, 
vice president there who's in charge of everything that I ever think about over there. Um, uh, so Kamal, could you uh, give us a little bit of uh, an update on how things have been going in the in the spring, what some challenges may have been and, and how, how things are looking as you look forward to the fall? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Phil. And, and uh, it's great to be with you all this morning. And Martha, thank you for the shout out. I would really appreciate that. Um, for the spring, um, similar to uh, what was shared by Alfred, we, we made a quick pivot um, to online or remote instruction. Our students did not come back to campus uh, after spring break. And we used that time that they were away on spring break and one week after uh, to, um, to begin to convert our in-person instruction uh, to the remote learning environment. And that was done in a number of ways uh, with uh, online Zoom meetings, um, project-based learning and assignments. And I certainly want to commend our faculty for uh, moving quickly. Uh, we actually um, did not have, did not prior to, prior to COVID-19, we did not have a lot of our courses um, online or in that remote environment. So uh, for, the, for the faculty to convert those courses uh, as quickly as they did uh, was absolutely remarkable. Uh, we, we did many of the things, again, that Alfred mentioned. Um, we surveyed students about, as to what their technology needs um, were and, and worked to meet those needs as best we possibly could. Uh, we provided, we, we stood up a, um, a hotspot in our TDS uh, site, a TDS parking lot for students. Um, we also um, work very closely, the faculty work very closely with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the, our technology department to ensure that they, our IT, I, I, our IT group, to ensure that they had the training that they needed. Um, again, it was, a, it was a, we had not done a lot in the remote um, and online space before, so uh, faculty had to be brought up to speed pretty quickly uh, to make that conversion and make the adjustment. Um, the other challenge that we had that um, I think we, worked, we did really well at is, is bringing the students back to collect their belongings and then get them completely moved to help them complete, get completely moved out of the residence hall. So we moved our students out of the residence hall over a three day period. Um, one, the first day uh, was, our, was our heaviest day. We worked very closely with all of our partners on campus and in the community to ensure that we allowed the students and their families to, to move out in, um, uh, in, in, a, in a very safe uh, manner. Uh, overall, uh, we, we believe we did a, a really good job of, uh, of, of making the conversion. Uh, what we learned from our students is that they really um, wanted to be on campus. Keene State is a public liberal arts institution, re highly residential, and so the basis of our education is, is through those interactions, building community, and students have, have an opportunity to uh, have to engage in what we could consider to be high impact practices where there's a lot of experiential opportunities for students, not only on campus, um, but in the community. Uh, we, did, uh, we did maintain contact with our students. So we were concerned that during this transition, you know, certainly our students were, were experiencing a sense of loss, um, as was our faculty and staff. Um, but we, uh, we have a, a, a team of professionals that work on campus called the a CARES team. And so any students that were in distress, um, the students that were, might be experiencing some difficulty making the conversion uh, to learning in the remote in, in the remote environment, uh, faculty and staff could refer those, those students to the care team, and our team would follow up and, and maintain contact and provide them with the supports they needed. And our offices, our student support service offices, our student affairs um, offices that, that provide programs and activities, also started to convert their uh, their um, services and programs to the remote remote learning environment, and also connected with students. In that, in that space to provide them uh, with additional support. So it was, it was interesting how, how uh, even with our student activities programs, being able to take some of those activities and, 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 and convert them to the remote learning, uh, re remote learning environment to keep our students active and engaged. So our, 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 the, the various offices, departments, and programs on campus um, needed to make that, that pivot as well. Uh, we had begun at the beginning of the year to move some of our counseling service to telecounseling. And uh, it was it was it, it was fortunate that we were able to do that, and we were able to test some things out during the first semester, uh, so that we were better at that um, once once we had to uh, respond very quickly uh, to the crisis. Uh, right now, uh, we're engaged in planning for reopening. We announced about three weeks ago that we do plan to reopen, and as Phil mentioned uh, a bit earlier, uh, President Treadwell. 
uh, has been chairing the uh, co what, we, what we're calling the COVID-19 Coordinating Council. And that's the, that's, a, that's a system level team that's working across USNH uh, with all of the, the member institutions within the system to, uh, to develop a, 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 a risk mitigation and management plan. You know, our goal is to bring students, to reopen and have our students, faculty and staff rejoin the community in the, in the safest way possible. So some of the, the, the underlying uh, foundational assumptions that our, our plan has been built on around, uh, around adequate testing, uh, prior to uh, prior to faculty and staff and students uh, re re returning to campus, um, ensuring that we can um, contact trace um, if there's if 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 there are positive um, positive results uh, for the for for COVID nineteen, and also being able to isolate and quarantine students and provide them with the medical um, care they may need uh, while they're while they're in the environment. Uh, our our faculty is working very hard to. Uh, redesign and rethink um, the delivery um, of our academic programs. We will have what um, many in the industry now are calling the high flex model. So there'll be a combination of in-person uh, as well as online and, and remote modalities to, uh, to deliver the content and provide instruction um, to our students. And we'll be doing the same uh, in terms of our out of the classroom, um, uh, out of the classroom opportunities for students, our co-curricular programs, um, services and uh, and activities. It'll look very different. Um, it'll be a different environment. It won't be the same. Um, and we're going to work hard to um, make sure that we are able to still engage students, still have that sense of community um, here on campus, and do so in a in a, in a very safe way. Um, as Alfred mentioned, you know, as well, uh, all colleges and universities are are really um, uh, looking at the, the taking a close look at the facilities. Uh, because we will be at lower capacity um, to maintain the physical distancing and all the other health guide and following the, all the other health guidelines um, to ensure again um, the, the 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 safest environment possible. Stepping up cleaning um, in our facilities, uh, rearranging furniture, looking at our our classroom spaces or opportunities for classroom space differently. Some of the some we we're also um, have put it. We're also established. 50 Zoom classrooms. So we again will be using um, that high flex model where uh, part of the class may actually be part of the classroom enrollment may actually be sitting in the classroom while the other in the synchronous, synchronous environment may be participating on Zoom. And then the next classroom meeting, uh, those uh, those uh, populations would be flipped. Uh, we're um, even looking at how we might use our outdoor spaces. Uh, for instruction in a different way, uh, for um, expanding our seating for dining, you know, for example, um, how we may again reuse uh, or repurpose some of the facilities that we have here on campus. So we have some teams uh, here on campus as well as at the system really uh, engaged uh, in, intensely in that planning. Uh, we're we're um, excited um, about the opera. With, with, we're moving from. Um, from crisis to a, bit, a new business model and sustainability. So when I say we're excited, we're excited to bring our students back on campus, and we're looking at uh, we're, we're we're trying to find the positive, uh, the positive lining, if you will, uh, uh, in the midst of crisis. And we are, we're 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 pleased uh, and, and and grateful to our faculty and our staff and students for responding in such a positive way and being um, resilient in, you know, in this very difficult time. That's uh, excellent, uh, Kamal. Uh, it's a it's a big operation uh, at Keene State, and there uh, there are lots of pieces to the puzzle. So uh, I'm I'm happy to hear all those pieces are moving forward. One one piece you didn't mention that uh, is is kind of a big part of our community uh, is your uh, athletics program, uh, which yeah. I know uh, is uh, is under your uh, umbrella there. So uh, what what's going on with athletics? It's been a tough really for, for, you know, for high school athletes, for college athletes, for anybody who particularly who played a spring sport. Uh, uh, and that, that's kind of behind us now, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, what does that look like going forward? Uh, we have, um, there's a, there's a, we have a, a, a task force um, on campus right now, it's essentially this, this out of athletics called return to play. And so we're following NCAA guidelines and, um, and, and the NCAA has, um, has, has just yesterday, we're Division Three, and they just yesterday um, have um, essentially given the go-ahead for Division Three institutions to, 
to start to move forward with, uh, with plans to um, engage in, in, in uh, competition uh, this, uh, this fall. Uh, we're, in, we're members, King State is a member of the uh, Little East Conference. So uh, there's, uh, the, the athletic directors and the presidents have been uh, working on the necessary conditions to return to play uh, for athletics as well. And so uh, similar to uh, the, the work that we're doing on campus to, to reopen the campus for, uh, for instruction and uh, also extra, extracurricular activities, um, the, 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 the athletics program is also planning uh, to return to play um, in, uh, in, in the, in, in, and ri mitigate risk in the best possible um, way, to po the safest way possible. So we, we expect um, that we'll be able to do that. Um, that will require uh, certainly uh, enhanced safety, safety uh, precautions, uh, distancing uh, as, 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 much as, as much as you possibly can um, in, uh, you know, in meetings, um, in practice. Uh, but once we get the competition, um, really uh, they, the, the testing is gonna be essential and key there. Uh, again, the, the students and student athletes need to engage in um, uh, good hand hygiene, um, and, and, and take the necessary safety precautions. And they're, they're, they're probably the population that's gonna be engaged in more um, testing and monitoring um, of symptoms um, related to, to COVID. Or, uh, and, and once we get into the flu season, that'll be uh, an, 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 another uh, consideration for our student athletes. Excellent, one final question for you, Kamal. And then uh, we're, we're gonna get to questions in just a minute. We have a couple already in the chat box uh, uh, that we'll, we'll uh, try to address. Uh, but one final question for Kamal, uh, and, and it's, a, it, it's a difficult one, probably in a nuanced one to some degree, but how, how has this affected enrollment and uh, uh, people, uh, you know, accepting their, their, their role in the incoming class and, and, and students returning and all of that? Yeah, across the country, um, in particular for your institutions, um, enrollment um, has, has, has been challenging uh, you know, as, as students and more students are thinking about, um, in particular first year students are thinking about uh, what the, uh, the uncertainty about what a, a first, their first year of college would be, whether or not um, their first choice institutions are opening, the distance they, uh, the distance they will go from home because of uh, the, 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 the COVID-19 um, uh, virus. Um, early projections nationwide was that uh, Colleges and university would experience about a 20% uh, drop in enrollment, uh, first year students in particular. Uh, we're at about 10% now, uh, but we're, we're, we're gaining steadily. We're starting to see a steadily increase, steady increase um, in, uh, in our first year students uh, making their deposits and um, raising their hand and telling us they're, they're planning on coming to Keene State. Uh, we've had um, uh, good responses um, from from uh, the, our students who've been in the enrollment uh, in the enrollment pipeline. We just began our new student orientations uh, this week uh, in a virtual orientation uh, for our students. Um, those orientation sessions have been filled. We 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 capped them at 150 um, early on. So the early the early orientation sessions um, are, are, are 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 heavily 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 participated in. And our students are responding really well and, 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 and are very engaged in the programming. Um, we've met our, our goal for uh, returning students uh, so far, and we, we hope, to hang, to, hope to maintain um, that interest and that enrollment over the course of the summer. So we'll continue to in, be engaged with the students, communicate with them, provide them with additional updates. Um, others, we believe, are in a wait and see mode. Um, they know that we're reopening. They know that things will be different. Uh, so as, as we continue to um, solidify our plans and make uh, additional decisions as, a, as they relate to enrollment, um, students have a better idea. We communicate uh, what, what the uh, academic year would look like and the experience on campus would look like. Um, then uh, we expect that uh, we'll start to uh, continue to uh, see some increases and some gains in terms of uh, the students who uh, co commit to attending King State this fall. That's, that's uh, great news, Kamal. And, and I know that uh uh, Keene State is very, very active on social media, and those of you who don't follow some of their social media feeds uh, might want to do so because uh, it's very evident how how much outreach they're doing to uh, the community. So uh, I want to turn quickly to uh, I, I know somebody from Antioch uh, University of New England, uh, the the third higher ed uh, institution that has a presence in Keene. 
So I want to uh, give Antioch a, a little bit of a chance to tell us what they've been up to. Sure. Hi. Um, I'm Linda Drake Gobo. I'm the Associate Provost. And um, I just happen to be the co-chair of the 2020 Fall Reopen Task Force. So when I saw the, the announcement for this, your timing is remarkable. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, Antioch, uh, Antioch already had a fair number of hybrid programs. So uh, it's been interesting to listen to um, my colleagues at the other institutions. And I feel like some of the things that both of you talked about are exactly what we experienced um, for the students that had a lot of face-to-face -face in, the, in the spring. Um, for the fall, we, um, I, we were a little stricter than you all initially. And what we're now moving to is, uh, this is what our programs look like for phase one. And that's the, the lowest risk possibility and then we have a phase two and if in August or end of July things look good we'll go to a more moderate hybrid approach um, so that that way if we have to make a shift at the last minute and go back to a more restrictive practice we will um, we we similar to my colleagues um, we plan to do our most of September will be virtual with our residencies happening in October and November. And then we're planning to go back to virtual at the Thanksgiving mark so that we don't have, we didn't want to have students um, go home for Thanksgiving and bring home a bunch of brand new germs to us. So, because we don't have health facilities, we're a commuter, a commuter school, and a lot of our students come from as far as Boston and Albany area to come in. Um, our classes on campus will be mostly in the dance movement therapy and environmental studies area, and our counseling and mental health residency programs. Um, we are finding that as long as the applied psychology and clinical psychology professional associations are willing to um, use telehealth to meet their counseling hour requirements, we're okay. And as long if they change their mind and go back to insisting on face to face, then we're going to have a uh, then we're going to have a challenge. Um, so that's pretty much where we are right now. I, um, I think the um, thing that we're spending a lot of time on are how to do our field trips for in, in environmental studies programs and how to do our Waldorf classes because there are um, some of those that are shared equipment and everybody in class uses the same materials. So that's, that's our current challenge. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, that's uh, that, that's good news. I I think the the theme uh, here is that uh, uh, all three of the keen based institutions uh, are, uh, are are ramping up in various ways mm -hmm. in, in accordance with uh, the guidelines that we we all have from the state and and uh, the state has been you know quite fortunate in the at least our part of the state has been quite fortunate in the way that. Uh, we've reacted to uh, the uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic uh, in the, our infection rates have been relatively low as, as well as it's our hospitalization and, and other rates. So uh, it doesn't mean that if certainly if you look around the country, uh, there are states that are, you know, just now getting to, uh, uh, you know, getting into, into various spikes. So uh, it, it seems that each, each of these institutions is being vigilant and, and, uh, about the the health risks and keeping the health risks uh, you know front and center in in their planning. So that's good news. Uh, I'd I'd like to uh, open it up. Does anybody have uh, any questions for any of the people we've heard from so far? I have I have one question um, that uh, somebody put in the chat that I that, that I'll throw out to any of you, and that. Uh, and, and it's an appropriate one for the for the chamber as well. Uh, how have your uh, 
communications have been with businesses in the area and you know, and uh, how is working with businesses changed or uh, how, how are you all interacting? I know you all work with businesses in various ways uh, through internships and, and, and other uh, things like that. Uh, I, Alfred mentioned a little bit about the, the hiring, uh, but uh, any of you want to comment on how you've been uh, interacting with the business community? Well, I, I would say that, um, you know, a lot of the businesses that we inter interact with are on the Ally Health field do, for clinicals for our students. And um, whereas, you know, it's, there's a change in the way that we're, we're doing clinicals and it may be that we're doing clinicals uh, less so in very small places and more so in larger groups. Like our LPN class is, is all going to Dartmouth-Hitchcock in the same area uh, for clinicals this summer. Um, the there is a desire to work there's a desire to figure out ways to work and figure out ways to make it happen because they know that they're going to need uh, the workforce uh, i checked in with our career uh, office um, to find out you know some data on on the hiring and such and what i was told is that we're seeing um we're doing a lot of outreach to businesses to post jobs and we're seeing um uh you know different type different type of jobs uh jobs that are more you know in you know in businesses that have been still operating in the COVID crisis that have much more needs and we're seeing different type of businesses in that sense advertising to our uh, graduates than have in the past and so uh, that's that's been an interesting trend from there. Uh, any, any, anything from uh, from Keene State on that, uh, Kamal? Yeah, in, in the spring uh, we 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 maintained and once we made the transition to the um, to the remote environment, we maintained our contact with businesses and. Um, transition one of the programs that we call the career speaker series where we are we're engaging with um, different employees uh, in the area um, on and, and in specific or in particular uh, career um, areas as well uh, we transitioned that to an online environment uh, we're also um, uh, working with uh, businesses especially with those academic programs that require internships uh, to determine how we might be able to what the what those um, internship opportunities might look like uh, either the safety enter, entering enter an environment or um, or uh, more in more remote uh, work from home internship experiences actually we have um, and we have on campus we've offered this summer uh, remote uh, internship experiences um, for students at our institution and and um, and, and other institutions uh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna um, working to determine how our career and internship fair um, may actually be um, offered uh, to what extent we're going to that, that will be in person or um, a virtual virtual internship fairs a number of institutions have saw, already started to make that type of transition and so um, those internship opportunities uh, will still continue to, to engage with business and industry um, as their as their offices and uh, different um, locations are opening up um, then we'll certainly follow those guidelines that they they put in place there. So we're still maintaining those contacts. Um, the other um, with our academic program is the 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 one one area that where there's a quite a bit of uncertainty right now is is with our teaching our teacher education program and how our te our how our, our, our undergraduate students who are training to be teachers uh, will be able to uh, get the, the uh, get the necessary training they need the student teaching. Um, in the public school. So um, that's still uncertain how the, how the public schools are going to look. Uh, so there's still continued work being done there. Excellent. I, I, I know in the check, chat box, uh, Louise Ewing uh, uh, put some information about the career uh, career team at Keene State and and how uh, they're going to a, uh, a virtual or, or working on a virtual career fair uh, right. platform for the fall. And there's a link there to find out more about that or a place where uh, any employers can uh, put uh, uh, job listings uh, to get to Keene State students. So uh, that's uh, that's good news. Anybody uh, anybody else have uh, have uh, have a comment or question? In the, Phil, in the Work Ready New Hampshire program, we still have Dartmouth Hitchcock and uh, Med or Cheshire Medical Center Dart representing Dartmouth Hitchcock and uh, Masiello Staffing Agency come in to do mock interviews. And they're still hiring people. Um, I they, I can't speak for them exactly how many and, and what positions, but they are they when they do mock interviews with us and tell us what's going on in the 
and their programs, they're, they are still hiring. Excellent. And uh, we, uh, as a chamber, we are, we are doing some uh, work to reach out to uh, uh, various employers in the area to uh, get a sense kind of in the aggregate of uh, what the workforce needs are now. They, they, were, they were a certain way four or five months ago. Uh, they're, they're not quite the same way now, although some of the uh, positions that uh, were, were hard to fill uh, then are hard to fill now, but it's not quite uh, the same as it was. So we're endeavoring to, uh, to try to gather some data about that, and we're certainly going to be sharing that with the educational institutions in town uh, as, as we get it. So uh, that's something that the Chamber is working on. Uh, any, anybody else? Phil, Dave Westover has a question. Oh, great, Dave, go ahead. Yes, Phil, thank you. Uh, Kamal, first and foremost, thank you for your team for really following this moving target uh, virtually 24 hours a day. So I, my question uh, to you is, we all remember our mindsets back when we were 18, 19, 20 years old. Last I checked, at least in New Hampshire, there have been no deaths associated with the zero to 20 age group. There's gonna be numerous rules uh, that students are gonna be expected to follow when they return to campus. How does the education process work and how do we get through to the students in terms of the whys of the rules that are gonna be in place? Yeah, um, constant communication and, um, and, and education and training um, is what we expected that we'll be engaged in with our students over the course of the academic year and, and even leading up to um, students returning on campus. Uh, one of the, um, as I mentioned a bit earlier, we're, we, we're, there's a, a, a coordinating council at the system level and we also with representatives from each one of our campuses. So we, we do have a team of, um, of individuals who are uh, actually putting together, uh, developing, excuse me, developing an, an education campaign, um, a, a health education campaign for uh, for our students, primarily our students here on campus, as well as our students off campus. We expect the campaign to be student-led, student-driven, and, and more peer-to-peer -peer influence. Uh, that's one of the better ways to, uh, for our students to engage um, in this process. So, um, those are, so we're, gonna really, we're really putting a lot of attention on the education, um, not only for their students' own safety, but their role uh, as, and their responsibility um, as citizens um, and keen as well as uh, members of our campus community and, and, and how their behaviors um, can impact others. So, um, so those, the, that's a lot of the work that's underway right now. Uh, in addition to that, it's, it's, it's some, somewhat of a carrot and stick type of um, approach as well because we, will, we are uh, reviewing all of our conduct policies that are, uh, that are outlined in our student handbook and, um, and determining um, the most effective and appropriate means of, of holding, uh, holding ourselves and holding, uh, holding our students accountable. Excellent. Um, thank you, good question. And uh, I, uh, those of you who don't know, uh, Dave uh, uh, should know that he's maybe the most involved Keene State alumnus uh, that I know of anyway, <laughs> for, for many, many years. Um, Anyone, uh, anyone else have a thought or comment? And I'm, I'm mindful of people's uh, time, uh, so we want to wrap up on time. Okay, well, that's, that's great. I, I want to uh, thank everybody for participating. Uh, what we're going to do, I think, and I'm, uh, I, I, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here, because uh, Phyllis will let me know if I am, uh, that uh, this is being recorded, and I'm not sure that you're going to automatically get a link to the recording, but I believe that we can provide a link to uh, uh, the recording for those who are interested. So if, uh, if you don't get one and are interested, uh, send us an email at info at keenchamber.com, or uh, you can contact uh, me uh, if you find my email address, but that's the easiest one to remember, info at keenchamber.com. Uh, and we'll uh, send you a link to this recording. I, knew, I know that at least one person wanted to share it with some of their colleagues, uh, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, we will be doing this again uh, a couple of times over the next month. If anybody has uh, suggestions about who you'd like to hear from in this kind of format, uh, let us know that as well. We hope to be having a session with the uh, 
uh, new, still relatively new airport director uh, here in Keene to talk about some of what's going on with the, uh, with the airport. Uh, and, and there is a lot going on at the airport. So uh, we hope that'll happen in the next month, as well as a session with uh, uh, the new uh, head of the Cohen Center at uh, Keene State College, uh, Peter McBride, uh, who's a, a fascinating uh, individual and uh, is uh, taking over the reins there at the Cohen Center, and there, there's a lot going on there as well. So uh, with that, I will uh, thank you all for, uh, for participating this morning. Uh, keep your uh, eyes open on our e-blasts. So if, if you're not on our e-blast list, or if you know somebody who would like to be on the e-blast list, uh, send that to info at keenchamber.com as well. And we'll make sure that you're, uh, you get notifications of these kinds of events as well as others. There, there will be another uh, Business After Hours virtual event uh, later this month, so that you'll be hearing about that as well. We're all making transitions uh, to a slightly different business model and way of doing things, and the, the chamber is no different uh, in that sense than than, and going through that uh, the same as the rest of you. So uh, with that, I, it looks like a really nice day outside. I hope everybody can get out uh, and uh, enjoy it and uh, have a terrific weekend and uh, we'll be in touch.